Second pick in the NBA draft, that should be a good thing, right? I mean, yeah, you don't have the top pick, but you have the choice from the field besides that. But it seems like we've had a lot of busts with the number two pick. And I don't think it's a coincidence. I think, yes, a lot of number one picks have lived up to the hype. But after that, there's a lot of uncertainty. So in this video, I'm going to dive into the second overall picks from the year 2000 to 2021 and see a trend of why they might not be performing up to expectations. So first, we're going to look at the, actually the number two picks overall since then. Long name of list right here. You can see on the left, we have the 2000s, some notable busts there, highlighted by Darko Milicic, highlighted by the notable Kevin Durant, who's probably might be the best second overall pick of all time. On the right side, we see the 2010s, including James Wiseman, not the most recent number two to pick. That would be long to Jalen Green, who hopefully isn't a bust, um, but the most recent one that's played in some NBA action. Now we look here and there's 21 players on this graphic. Now only six have been all-stars. So that shows you that less than 25%, around 25%, haven't actually held up to an all-star status, which is something that you would hope the second pick in the draft would give you. So we're going to take in a deeper look at the accolades on there. Now, between those 21 players, there's 23 all-star appearances, but it's heavily skewed because of Kevin Durant, who has 11 all-star appearances, and LaMarcus Aldridge, who has seven. So in those back-to-back -back years in 06, 07, they panned out pretty well. But besides that, there are five all-star appearances between 19 players. That's horrific. We look at the rookie of the year. Look, most of the time it goes to the first pick since the year 2000, about 33% of the uh, rookie of the year voting goes to the number one overall pick. But there's actually been a considerable amount that have uh, fallen from the number two. Maka Okafor in 2004, Kevin Durant, no surprise, and Ja Morant who doesn't have an all-star appearance yet, hopefully should have one in the future. I do want to give a notable shout out to Tyson Chandler, who is 2011 Defensive Player of the Year, three-time All-Defensive Team, and Brandon Ingram, who is the 2020 Most Improved Player. But why do they fail? Well, I have a few theories why. The first is they're coming out too early. So if we look at the breakdown, almost half of the players that come out that are the number two pick are freshmen in college. Now, a lot of this has changed because of the one and done rule. So players have to at least go to school for one year. And a lot of times they know that they're only going to go for a semester because they have a high pedigree and that their name will get them an early pick. But we also see that there are some sophomores and juniors as well going back and it's kind of Victor Oladipo with the most recent one on there. Actually, I believe it was D'Angelo Russell. But we don't see any seniors on there. So besides the juniors, a lot of these players, I don't think, have necessarily owned their craft to play at the highest level. But this isn't the only reason why. And the biggest thing for me is comparisons, because I think we're all chasing something. And not just in basketball. We tend to make comparisons in our day-to-day -day life, but here are some famous ones here. And not to throw any of these people under the bus because they're great at what they do, but nobody's going to be right 100%. So if we look, Darko Milicic was compared to Dirk Nowitzki. I think everybody was chasing on the next overseas phenomenon. Michael Beasley was compared to Carmelo Anthony by Borko Popic. Hashim Tabit was compared to Dikembe Mutombo by Brad Reynolds. Actually, a Dikembe Mutombo with a higher floor. Michael Kidd Gilchrist was compared to Andre Iguodala by Jonathan Wasserman. And I feel like everyone had the comparison that Lonzo Ball was going to become the next Jason Kidd. So a lot of times these general managers, when they get these comparisons, you have the expectation that these players are going to perform like who they're being compared to and play a similar style. But there are more reasons behind that. And it goes to the teams as well because the lack of playing time their first year. Now, keep in mind, these are players that have probably dominated every level of their life. And then in their first year to not have that transition 
where they're playing consistent minutes, not only does it help them not develop their game, but it affects them mentally. Now, if you look, nine players started 40 plus games. And I think it's important starting because you're getting rotations with the primary team and you're facing the best of the best, obviously having the starters play. So not even half of them are getting half the season to start. Eight players started less than 20 games. So besides the shortened season that we just had with 72, eight players started less than 25% of the games. So even if you're not in contention, I think that you need to give them more playing time. And in that same amount, eight players averaged less than 24 minutes per game their first year. So the eight out of 21 is 38%. So 38% of these players aren't getting the playing time they need to the first year. That's going to affect their development. Once again, if you're spending a high draft pick on these, they should be impact players right away. They also go to a bad team. And we look at the old draft lottery system, which was used until 2018. The worst team had a 64.2% chance of a top three pick. The second worst team had a 55.8% chance of a top three pick. And the third and fourth had a 42.6% chance. So most likely, you're going to be going to a bad team. Not only that doesn't have the talent surrounding that you'd hope a young player would want to help build their game, but probably their management isn't as good if they're picking high. But I believe the last reason is just some miscellaneous stuff. Look, we have injuries. Jay Williams, the second pick in the 2002 NBA draft, only had one year of his career because of a motorcycle accident. Jabari Parker, his second year in the league, tore his ACL and has had recurring injuries where we'll never see that upside that he had. You look at work ethic. Michael Beasley was a very talented prospect, but went to, I think, over five high schools, had reports that he couldn't even go to classes at Kansas State, and that work ethic probably didn't transfer to the NBA. Now, he probably just relied on his natural talent to get him to that level, but once again, you're playing the best of the best. And then I think for some teams, rather than taking the safe pick like we see in 2004, where the Pistons could have gone with Carmelo, with Bosch, with Wade, you're chasing that upside, that potential, that athleticism. Another example, Hashim Tabit, 7'6". You can't necessarily teach height. He averaged over three blocks a game at Connecticut. So as we see with old NBA, traditional centers were very important and people that could impact the game with their size. But I do think that there is some optimism for the second pick. Because if you look, two out of the last six picks have been all-stars with Brandon Ingram, who also won the most improved player, and D'Angelo Runcel, likely John Moran in the future. Some of them are playing on good teams now. James Wiseman is on the Warriors, where hopefully when they get Clay this year, or Clay back this year, they look like the dynasty that they have been. And he will probably be fourth fiddle to Steph, to Clay, to Draymond maybe to Jonathan Kaminga. Lonzo Ball looks like he's going to be a good fit with the new look Bulls with DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Vucevic for a year. And Lonzo said he's going to go back to running the traditional point guard. And then we have some new options as well. And as we see with Jalen Green, he's playing in the G League, which I think is the best way to get a prospect ready for the pros. Now, once again, they're not playing against the best of the best, but it's probably the closest thing because – your average college player that doesn't have a chance of making the NBA, they're not going to be playing in that league as well. So hopefully that they can reverse this trend because I'm liking the most recent number two picks we've had, probably besides Marvin Bagley as well. I think as an NBA fan, it's kind of interesting because with a high pick, you assume that it's going to hit for the majority of the time. But it seems like the number two pick for the last 20 years has been anything but a sure thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you see this trend changing around? Do you think that some of these players aren't busts? Let me know your thoughts. Anything that you'd like for me to cover in the future? I appreciate everybody that's tuned in, and I'll catch you on the next